Hey y'all. I know I've been showing you how to make my chicken and wild rice soup, but oh, <laughs> um, I wanted to show you something else today. So I'm gonna do it on a live so that I can save it. Um, for those of you who are interested in doing this, you're gonna love it. Okay, have you ever, never have I ever, <laughs> never have I ever bought a sugar pumpkin, a pie pumpkin. They're either called sugar pumpkins or pie pumpkins. You don't wanna use jack-o'-lantern pumpkins that you've grown in your garden. Um, use those for your decorations. These are specifically made for making homemade pie. Um, and so I never have I ever made a pumpkin pie from scratch with pureed pumpkin that I've roasted. So I found some of these at Trader Joe's and they also have them at where did I get these? Target, believe it or not. Walmart didn't have them, Smith didn't have them. I don't know if they're just not out yet seasonally, but um, I found these two. These are about two and a half pounds a piece, maybe three. You want about, a, uh, you want two pumpkins. So I'm just gonna dive right into it. You want two pumpkins and you want them to be the sugar pumpkins or pie pumpkins. They'll say that when you go into the grocery store. Okay, so then just wash them off. Um, some of them will come with a little dirt on them. You're not gonna eat the skin but just as a health precaution. Okay, so then you're gonna set your oven to 400 and let it heat up. And in the meantime, you are going to take these pumpkins and turn them this direction, okay? You're not gonna slice them this way. You're gonna slice them this way, okay? Then you're gonna slice it open. Let's see, I'm worried that I'm gonna cut myself because <laughs> I don't have real super sharp knives. I need Cutco knives truthfully. Hey Cutco, want to sponsor me? <laughs> okay, so I just want to be a little bit careful since I'm stressing about my knife. Okay, basically you've opened up your pumpkin. Now at this point, you know what to do. You're not going to roast it with the seeds and stuff in it. You're just going to scoop out all of this stuff, throw it in the trash, or like I did the other day, um, is take the seeds out and then let them wash them and then let them dry out um, in a sheet pan. And then you can use them for granola, uh, snacking on, roasting with a little salt. Great for the, the season. Okay, now I don't own a grapefruit spoon because guess what? I don't eat grapefruits. <laughs> so I just use a regular spoon, but a grapefruit spoon has those little uh, ridges on the spoon so that you can scoop it out good. I would prefer that. Maybe I'll buy one now that I have this situation. I'm just gonna use this bowl. And I'm just gonna scoop this out. Again, your oven is just at 400. And once it is ready to go, you're just gonna get a cookie sheet and line it with parchment paper or tin foil. You don't wanna put it directly onto your cookie sheet because it will probably stain it, meaning you know it'll probably burn a little bit. Um, but how fun is this? I've always wanted to do this, but I've never done it. So next year I've decided I am growing sugar pumpkins in my garden. Because I actually have pumpkins in my garden, but I don't ever do this. Never done it before. Have you guys done this before? Made homemade pumpkin puree? Now, if you remember during the pandemic, can I even say that word? Oh! oh. <laughs> To get too aggressive with my pumpkin. Okay, so basically you've got most, I'm just gonna show you real quick. You got, got it cleaned out, okay? Okay, and then I've got my sheet pan here. Can you guys see? You can give me a heart if you can see pretty good. Okay, and then what you're gonna do is you're going to take this um, little sugar sweet pumpkin and you're gonna put it upside down like this on your cookie sheet, okay? So I do two pumpkins at a time, and that's gonna give me pretty much enough to do a pumpkin pie or um, some pump and, and or, because it does actually create quite a bit of pumpkin puree. Um, well, I'm not gonna go into all this, but I won't do it all. Just do one pumpkin. But I do two, two pumpkins at a time because I'm gonna get enough to make pumpkin bread and pumpkin pie. So if you remember last year, that's what I was saying. If you remember last year, 
lit. Um, and get somebody who loves you so much to do this for you. <laughs> oh, okay. I have done this now. I'm now, now that I've done it by myself, I can show you. That's why I've been waiting to show you. But during the pandemic last year, pumpkin was gone. Pumpkin puree in this form was gone. It was super hard to find. Trader Joe's had it, limited supply, but mostly it was super hard to find. Okay, so I'm not gonna save my pumpkin seeds because I already saved some and I already roasted them. So I don't really need them. So basically you get the gist, right? You just put your pumpkins um, hollow side down or you know, just like this. And you put them in your oven, 400 degrees, for 40 minutes, and this will become super soft. And the magic of live television, look, you can see the difference. I'll show you the difference. See how this one's roasted, all nice and, and perfect? This one is not. Super, super bright orange still. Yes, I'm wearing my slippers, it's Sunday. Okay, so this has been, Cooling, um, you can do it right away, but you look, look at this. The skin just peels right off. I did it hot last time. I decided to wait till it was not hot because my fingers got burned. And this just goes straight in the trash. Okay, and this is your pumpkin puree. The one thing about uh, sugar sweet pumpkins or pie pumpkins, bam, right in my blender. Um, is that they're not as watery. That's why you wanna use these ones. You're gonna get a really good puree because the uh, pumpkins in general are watery vegetables, but these ones, look at that. Oh yeah. And after 40 minutes, because I'm super worried I'm not doing it right, I just stick it with a fork to make sure it's tender. I can go straight through it, just like a potato. Super, super easy to do, okay? Look at this beautiful, oh, and it makes your house smell amazing. Okay, so I've got two pumpkins here. If you have any questions, let me know. I always say that and nobody ever asks me anything until later. Then they start <laughs> messaging me like, oh wait, how do you, and I'm like, just ask me. Just ask me during, I'll try to answer. Okay. So I am just peeling off and you can see why I put parchment paper down because this is creating that juiciness right there. I like that. Um, I don't care if that's in my pumpkin puree because that's just more goodness, roasted goodness. Oh, roasted pumpkin right there. So I'm throwing this into my blender. I've not used my blender before, so I could be a fail in a minute. Okay, and we'll see how this goes. I'm not adding anything to it. We want the pure pumpkin. You don't want anything else added. Okay, let's see, what what, what should I do it on? I'm just gonna pulse. Food processor may have been better. Let me get my, let's see if this will help. I think when it's a little bit warm, it's a little bit easier to blend, but it's basically creating the puree. You know, Blend Tech can make soups, literally heats up everything. So I'm not surprised that it is strong enough to do the puree, and it is working. It's not as, not as quick as the food processor, which is what I used before. But I don't wanna clean it today. So, okay. Oh yeah, that's looking good. Okay. Okay, can you get the puree that I have out already in the refrigerator? Okay, look at this. It's already becoming the puree that I want for, to use. It's in a container. Top left, I think. There she goes. She's like, um, what in the world are you doing? So this 
may take a little bit longer than a food processor because it's spinning and cutting at the same time. And I also read somewhere you want to do one pumpkin at a time and I just threw two in here. Yellow. Okay. Okay, it's exactly what I want. It's the, the purest form of pumpkin ever and it smells incredible. Okay. We're going to call that a day. And this is what I have from my first batch. Look how smooth. So great. So what I'm going to do is just add that to here. <laughs> Mix that up. And you can measure out 15 ounces. You can weigh it out. Um, or if you're doing the recipe that I do, let's see. Okay. So that's how simple it is. Bottom line. It's super, super simple to just use a sugar sweet pumpkin, sugar pumpkin, um, which is a pie pumpkin, to cut this direction, um, heat up your oven to 400, and then cook it for 40 minutes until fork tender. Let it cool just a little bit, peel off the skin, blend up either with an emulsion blender, which I think would be a little bit tougher than a blender. So a blender, I would suggest either a blender high powered blender or a food processor is number one. That's the easiest way. And then you're gonna get your purified pumpkin. So if you can't find this in the stores this year, you can make it. Just go to your local pumpkin place. <laughs> There's a lot around here. I don't know if that's local to you guys, but they're always in the grocery store and people just pass them up and like, I can't make pumpkin pie or I can't do bread or whatever because I don't got pumpkin. Well, you can make your own. It's super easy. Okay, so with that said, I'm gonna, Take a little swig, and then I'm gonna show you how to make my pumpkin pie with this. Okay, so we've got three-fourths cup of sugar in the bowl, and then I'm going to put the spices in. Okay, here's the, here's the thing. My mother, I've said this before, if you followed me a while, you'll know that my mother-in-law who died of cancer, she used to make the best pumpkin pie, and it was her tradition to make pumpkin pie for her boys. And her boys, she had four boys and uh, was a divorced mother of four boys and always made their own pumpkin pie every single year. And so before she died, she told us what her secret was. And basically the secret is follow the back of the Libby's pumpkin. You're going to tell them grandma's I've, I've said it before. Um, this is, I believe this recipe is also on my blog, but um, it's the famous pumpkin pie, Libby's pumpkin pie. And then um, always use a homemade crust and then you're gonna double the spices. Not the salt, the spices. And so, the recipe is a half a teaspoon of salt, two teaspoons of cinnamon, one teaspoon of ginger, and a half a teaspoon of cloves. It's the smell of the century right there. Oh. Okay, and then you're gonna mix those spices together. Okay, I didn't have my whisk. So sugar and spice and everything nice, that's the truth. I can't see. Okay, and then we're gonna crack two eggs and, and uh, in a little bowl here. I'm gonna blend them together. Pumpkin pie is one of the easiest things ever to make. It's not hard to make, but it's even better with your homemade pumpkin puree. Has anybody ever made their homemade pumpkin? puree before. Pure pumpkin. Uh, pure puree. I don't even know. <laughs> okay. But I did. So I mixed my two eggs with the sugar and the spices. Hold on. Okay. That means my soup is ready. Okay. It's been simmering. Mm, I wish you all could smell this. It is so yummy. Okay. Then, let's see, I need my scale. Because I made my homemade pumpkin, bam, I'm gonna make sure that I have 15 ounces because this is a 15 ounce, right? Yeah, 15 ounce can and I need one can of this. So the best way to do it is just to scale it out so I make sure that I get exactly what I need. 
Didn't we scale that perfectly so that it wasn't I did, but I just added the other like a dum-dum. Oh. <laughs> so we need 15 ounces of homemade pumpkin puree or you know i'm not gonna i'm not gonna look down on you if you use libby's libby's because it's still good whoa nelly 16. hold your horses and kristen made some incredible pumpkin bread with this homemade pumpkin puree oh i messed it up no you didn't I know how to make pumpkin bread. I just didn't there we go. The glaze, right? Fifteen ounces exact. Add that. Whoa. My oven now is heated to four twenty-five, just like the recipe on the back of the label says. So we've got sugar, spice, pumpkin puree or pure pumpkin, and we're mixing it all together, making sure all those. Things are combined. <clears throat> and last but not least, you're gonna add a can of evaporated milk. One can. I kind of stir it in because that thick, it's thick right now, but that milk, if I put it all in at once, it's gonna be splashy. So just add a little at a time and then mix in until it starts to Combine really good. Now with my pie crust, um, you can find that recipe on the blog, or if you're really interested, I'll just message me and I'll let you know. Now I will say with the pump, my pumpkin bread and with um, pumpkin pie, as I'm seeing right now, it is a lighter color um, than Libby's. I bet they put orange drops in here to dye. It says pure pumpkin, but let's see. I swear they gotta put something in it. Anyway, um, to make it more orange. You'd think this would be the color that it comes out, but it's not. <coughs> Woo. Struggling. I felt like I had some pepper in my throat. Listen, it wouldn't be a surprise because I have literally, oh man. Yes, sir. I've been literally cooking all day since I got back from church. Okay, so then let me make sure. If you don't have the seasonings, you can get pumpkin pie spice. I don't say, I don't recommend that because using ginger, cinnamon, and cloves is better to me. Um, but you can just add the salt and then you can add pumpkin pie spice, three and a half teaspoons, okay? So in a pinch, you can do that. Now, here's my pie crust. Right here. I've made pie crusts um, a lot, and with a pumpkin pie, here's my pet peeve about doing pie crust with pumpkin pie. There's a lot of peas. There's a lot of pe peas, pie, peach, pie, pie. Pet peeve about pie crust with pie pumpkin pie. Pie crust, peach, pie, pie. Okay, so here's the problem I always have with a cooked custardy pie, is that the bottom of the crust is not flaky. It's mushy, and it's nasty to me. It may be your thing, or maybe you're like my husband, and, and because of that, if you get that kind of pie crust, you scoop out all the pumpkin and eat that. <laughs> That's what he does. I hate pumpkin pie. I'm just gonna be honest. You know, I just don't like it. But I will eat it if the crust is good, because I'm a crust person. I love crust. Raise your hand if you love the crust. Um, whoa, please don't fall. <laughs> please. Okay, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna par bake your pie crust. So I've got a homemade pie crust, I fill it, and I shape it and everything, and then I put it in my oven, I put parchment and then some pie line or pie weights so that you can keep that from bubbling up or shrinkage, okay? Um, having a cold pie crust will also help with shrinkage. I think I've said all this before um, when I've done pie, but anyway. So I bake it for about 15 minutes, take the parchment off, um, and then, and the, and the uh, pie weights, and then I cook it for another five. And then it's just, you can tell, it's just barely getting golden brown. And you can see it still has a, a little bit of a dough crust on the bottom, but this, all this top stuff is flake city. And it is delicious. And that will help your custard pies that you're gonna cook in the oven 
from destroying your beautiful crest. Okay, so now I'm just gonna fill, fill the pie, pie, um, pie crust, and that's a nine inch shell. There we go. And you're going to cook this in your oven at 425 for, I think it's 15 minutes, 15 minutes. Then don't open your oven, just reduce the temperature to 350 and bake for 30 to 40 minutes. Uh, until knife inserted, I just barely poke a really sharp knife in the center, and if it comes out completely clean, it's ready to go. And just bring it out and let it cool, and then serve it. And so that is how you do um, pumpkin, your homemade pumpkin puree, going from this to this. And it's super, super fast and easy, so I hope you will try it in your home. The smell, I cannot tell you, is amazing. You've, you're roasting fresh vegetables, um, if, if you grow these in your garden, I'm sure you already know how to do this, but um, I'm trying to do things in my garden that are, I can sustain and eat more than just, oh, that's pretty and I've always wanted to grow it. My basil, um, herbs and vegetables. I'm growing tomatillas right now. I'm not even sure what to do with them yet, but they're growing. <laughs> so I'll let you know how that goes. Besides making tomatilla salsa, that's gonna be good. Anyway, I hope you will try this and enjoy making homemade pumpkin puree so that you can enjoy it during the holidays. This is the season for pumpkins and making delicious, hearty meals. And this is the one way you can do it. Okay, I'll show you pictures of this when it's all done. And thank you for joining. If you have any questions, don't forget, you can message me or rewatch this and do it yourself. Okay, see y'all later. Have a happy Sabbath.